There's not really a perfect time for selecting the perfect bull, is there, Megan? No, that's a great point, Dave, because one of the most important things to remember about selection decisions it's, is that they're really long-term decisions mm -hmm. that impact the herd for a long time. So doing a really good job selecting bulls or females, mm -hmm. for that matter, really begins a long time before you step out onto the ranch to buy that bull. Now, let, let's go through the, 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 the bull selection. I mean, there's not the perfect bull. It kind of depends on what, what, what your herd looks like. That's exactly right. So the first step in a good bull selection scheme is really to sit down and figure out what your breeding objectives are. Mm -hmm. And your breeding objective basically just outlines um, things like your marketing plan, mm -hmm. whether you're going to keep replacement females or whether you have a terminal breeding system, what kind of breeds you're using, what types of mating systems, and things of that nature that really outline what types of traits you really need to select for. Because the next step is to go and look at EPDs and performance information. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's looked at that information knows that there's a really large number of traits available for people to make selection decisions on. So the important thing is to really narrow that down to what traits are really important to each specific herd and what really determines profitability so that we can really hone in on those traits when we make those selection decisions. So it's, it's much more than just showing up at the livestock barn and saying, yeah, that one looks good. Absolutely, absolutely. You want to really prioritize those traits and have a chance to really sit down and look through the performance information in those EPDs on a set of bulls to really prioritize and rank those bulls based on the traits that are important to each producer. So you've, you, you've picked out the perfect bull from the, from, from the EPDs and all of that. What is really the next step? The next step is to go take a look at those bulls mm -hmm. uh, because the EPDs are going to be our best selection tool for those performance traits, right. but there are still other traits that are really, really economically important. So when we go out to visually evaluate those bulls, we want to make sure that they're structurally sound, mm -hmm. um, that they move well on their feet and legs, and to make sure that we don't have any obvious disposition problems. And from there, we can take our prioritized list of bulls and really narrow them down so that we have an even smaller list of bulls that we really want to focus on purchasing. And then it's time to go to the to, to the ranch and really take a look at those bulls. Now let's let's say we got the bull, we brought it home, and it's it's re, it, it's breeding season. And and I have a newer bull and an older bull. What's really <laughs> going to be the difference whenever it comes to breeding? Older bulls will service a larger number of cows. Mm -hmm. um, so one thing to think about when you're thinking about uh, what age of bull to buy, whether it's a yearling, an 18-month-old, or a two-year-old bull, um, is how many cows you need that bull to breed. So that younger bull isn't going to be able to service quite as many cows right out of the gate mm -hmm. as quickly as an older bull will be able to do. Is there a length of time that, that a <laughs> bull should you know, be in the breeding season? It really helps to have a defined breeding season mm -hmm. rather than having a year-round breeding season where we keep the bull with the cows at all times. Right. And the advantage of that is really to have um, a bull out there so that we get calves within a defined period of time and that helps us generate larger lots of animals for sale. You can typically get more money for them if you have a larger lot. So there's some advantages in terms of that and also in terms of management because if we have, for example, a 60-day breeding season, we may have some animals that get bred early mm -hmm. and a few later and they may calve a little early or calve a little late. So even with the 60 day breeding season, our calving season may actually be a little bit longer than that. So it really helps from a management perspective to know when those calves are coming to be able to manage those animals for that, particularly when it comes to breeding heifers. Is AI an option? AI is absolutely an option. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the, it's one of those tools that people tend to overlook. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really accessible even for smaller breeders because one of the things that people don't often think about is that it's really expensive to go out and buy a bull. Specifically, right. um, if you think about needing a specialty bull, and by that I mean specifically to breed heifers. Mm -hmm. um, so it may actually be an advantage to go out and buy a bull that can be bred to all of the cows and really focus on AIing those heifers where you can find very high accuracy, um, calving ease, uh, AI sires to breed those heifers to. You might have to keep a few extra in case a couple of them don't breed, but those can be marketed later on. And then that also helps later on down the line when you have a small herd to prevent inbreeding if you make sure that the bull that you buy for your cows isn't related to the bulls that you're AIing to. Okay, thank you much, Megan. And for more information on this, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.